Hello everybody, I'm Rotten John and welcome back to Conan Exiles. Today we are in the Isle of Septa and we're going to spend 100 fragments of power inside of the center tower to see what kind of neat and exciting armors and weapons we can get. So we're going to weed out all of the duplicates and then we'll go and make everything and take a look at their stats and what each item looks like. Also take a second to hit that subscribe button. It's totally free for you, and it's going to help you stay up to date with your Conan Exiles gameplay and experience. So with all that said, let's jump into it. Alright, we spent our 100 fragments of power, weeded out all of the doubles, and this is what we ended up with. The first scrolls are the hardened steel cages that you can craft and the fast elevators. And we can make our fast elevators over here at our carpenter's bench. Alright, we've got our fast elevator made, so let's place it and see if they actually are any faster than what they used to be. Oh yeah, you can see they're faster already. This will make things really nice when you have those tall cliffside elevators. Oh, and look at that. Your hair even blows around now because of the speed of these elevators. Oh, this is pretty nice now. I've always avoided using elevators in the past just because they were so slow. Now we'll make one of the new steel cages at the artisan bench just to see what they look like. And it looks like there are seven different versions of the steel cages that you can make. And we're going to go with this one just so we can do a quick check out. And here's our hardened steel cage. Unfortunately though, you can't interact with it. You can't get into it, you can't open and close the doors or lock them on it. Alright, let's go check out our next item. The next scroll that we're going to learn are the parchments. And we'll make those over at the artisan bench also. And just as a heads up, the parchments are the notes that you can edit, write on, and leave around for people to read. And there's our note that we wrote on and left for someone else to find and read. Alright, let's take a look at our next item which are the lightweight arrows. Now you don't need a workbench to make these at, you can just make these right out of your own inventory. And they just require bones, branches, and plant fiber. Okay, moving on. Our next item is gonna be the heavyweight truncheon. And we will make the heavyweight truncheon over at our torturer's bench and what is this guy doing here buddy stop beating up my cages come on now I'm trying to make a video here look he's just wailing away on our cage i guess he does not like metal cages all right back to our heavy truncheon we'll get more into the heavyweight truncheon after a while here but our next item is going to be the legendary one-handed axe and over at the blacksmith's bench, we can craft our axe. Here's a little look at our legendary one-handed axe. Not too bad looking. As you can see, it does 27 health damage, has 0% armor penetration, it is a legendary weapon, it does shield smash, and has the escalating attribute to it, which I can only imagine escalates the damage the more you use it on your opponent. Next up is the legendary one-handed mace. It requires Eldarium bars and a weapon handle to craft it. And as you can see it is a legend weapon that does shield smash and stun damage with a health damage of 50 and armor penetration of 26.
All right, now we have a legendary one-handed sword. It also requires Eldarium bars and a weapon handle to craft. The sword is a legendary weapon, has cripple and stamina regeneration while equipped, and does 50 health damage with 8% armor penetration. Now keep in mind this is all on the test live branch so things are subject to change still before they hit the live services. Our next scroll teaches us the legendary two-handed axe. And our buddy is back beating up some of our foundation pieces for some reason. Uh, hey there, fish lips. I'm really starting to not like you now. Alright, so back to our two-handed legendary axe. As you can see, it is legendary weapon, does the whirlwind effect, and gives you bonus grit. And does 67 damage with 0% armor pen. And looking at this axe, it does have kind of a unique, kind of neat design to it. Looks kind of like a cross between a seahorse and a sea snake or something, maybe. Let's see if we can do the whirlwind attack with it. There we go. Not too bad, pretty good. Keep in mind, we have no points whatsoever in our strength, so we're not doing very much damage with these attacks. Our next little goodie here is a legendary two-handed axe. It's legendary weapon, does sunder, and is a shield breaker with health damage of 56 and armor penetration of 31%. I like the design of this. Looks like either bear or wolf's heads fashioned to the two-handed hammer. It's got a really nice unique design to it. Let me know in the comments what you think about the design of this. Alright, our next scroll taught us the legendary two-hand sword. A legendary weapon that has cripple and bonus agility does a health damage of 59 with armor penetration of 23%. It's got a nice little look to it. Different change up for a sword now. Alright, next scroll taught us legendary daggers. A legendary weapon, stacks bleed, and gives you the nimble effect with a damage of 44 and armor penetration of 17%. Nice looking daggers look like they have like a jade green handle to them. I'll be excited to use them later on down the road here. It seems to me that the nimble effect lets you dodge and roll even after you've, after you've initiated an attack with these daggers. Alright, that's enough of running around with sharp objects in our hands. Our next scroll teaches us the legendary katana. Alright, this legendary katana has a health damage of 53 with an armor penetration value of 13%. It is legendary weapon, stacks bleed, and has the blood drinker attribute to it. And I'm not sure what the blood drinker attribute is yet. I will try to find out for you guys. This is what the katana looks like. A little bit different from the katana you can get in the exiled lands. And then we'll do a couple of attacks with it just to show how the weapon works. Our next scroll in the lineup teaches us the legendary pike. And 
Here's our buddy back here beating up on our foundations again. This legendary pike is a legendary weapon. It has the reach capability and gives you bonus strength, vitality, and grit. It has a health damage of 61 with an armor penetration of 0%. It's a nice looking pike. Nothing real extravagant, but nonetheless, pretty neat looking. Now let's see how it works with attacks. Oh yeah, I can see standing back a little ways and jabbing your opponents from a distance with this. Next scroll teaches us something a little bit different. A legendary shield. This legendary shield requires a shield frame and Eldorium bars to craft. And the shield stats are legendary shield with shield smash and bonus vitality and grit with a health damage of 45 and armor penetration of 13%. Not a bad looking shield, kind of a little on the plain side. Also keep in mind during this demonstration that we do not have very many points at all put in our strength. I think there's only like one or two points put in our strength. So we're not doing as much damage with these items as we possibly could. But the point of this is just to show you what you can possibly get out of the scrolls at the tower now. Next scroll in our goodie box teaches us the legendary short sword. This legendary short sword is a legendary weapon. It applies cripple and has a wasting attribute applied to it. Its health damage is 51 with an armor pen of 8%. And here we'll take a quick look at it. Not really anything spectacular looking. Oh, and our next scroll teaches us the Bone Shrapnel Grenade. Something totally new added to the Isle of Sipta. And we'll make our new grenades over here at our Alchemist Bench. Alright, our new Bone Shrapnel Grenades have a health damage of 30 with zero armor penetration and it is a legendary throwing weapon. Oh yeah, these are going to have some fun uses down the road. Our next learned item here is the Dragon Bone Armor. I can't wait to see how this looks. Oh yeah, I really like the look of this armor. Kudos and props to the art department of Conan Exiles. This armor looks really nice. And remember, you can always dye it to suit your taste, too. This armor gives us a armor value of 1000 and a total damage reduction of 80% with a heat and cold resistance value of two tiers. The Dragon Bone Armor also gives us a plus two in strength, a plus four in vitality, and a plus two in grit. Beautiful, I love it. This might be my new favorite armor. Okay, the next scroll teaches us our Wonderlust Armor. Let's take a look at that. The Wonderlust Armor looks like a combination of maybe the Relic Hunter and Sand Mask armors from the Exiled Lands. Maybe I crossed something in there. It's a lightweight armor with an armor value of 200 and gives us a total damage reduction of 44% and absolutely no values to our attributes. However, with some of the new changes coming to the Isle of Septa, this armor will have its uses. 
Now the next two armors that we learn are variants of the Silent Legion armor. And first up we have the Silent Legion light armor. Now this is kind of nice looking. It retains the iconic Silent Legion helmet with a new breast and leggings skin. So I kind of like it. It is light armor with an armor value of 208 and a total damage reduction of 40%. And this armor adds plus 2 to our strength, plus 2 to agility, plus 2 to vitality, plus 2 to grit, and plus 2 to encumbrance while wearing it. And this is the Silent Legion Medium variant. Alright, this is nice. Has a nice bit of detail to it. Retains the iconic Silent Legion helmet. Has some really nice shoulder pads. Even a nice breast emblem on it. Alright, it's a medium weight armor with 488 armor points to it. Does a total damage reduction of 64%. Has 3 ticks to the heat resistance and two to the cold resistance also gives us plus two in strength plus two in agility plus two in vitality plus two in grit and plus two in encumbrance all right our last two scrolls teach us pirate banners and eldarium chests so let's take a look at those and we'll make both of those at the artisan's bench here are the new pirate banners Pretty cool for the role player and all of us. And let's make a couple of the Eldarium chests. Here are our new Eldarium chests. Pretty cool looking. Look like what you find inside of the dungeons anymore. I really didn't test to see if they hold any more than a regular chest or not. And we'll find out that when we get into a Let's Play series on the Isle of Sipta. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. It's free to you, and it does help me a little teeny bit. And by hitting that subscribe button, you're going to get all the inside info before your friends and foes so that you get the quicker advantage over them.